Former governor of Benue State, Gabriel Suswam, has declared his intention to run for the office of the national chairman of the People's Democratic Party. The former governor expressed his desire to vie for this position during an expanded caucus meeting of the party, which was held at his residence in Katsina Ala in Benue State. This was over the weekend, and he said he is seeking to complete the tenure of Iorchia Ayu, who is the suspended national chairman of the party. Now, according to a statement issued by Bede Bartholomew, the media aide to Suswam, by the law of the party, the position of the national championship is still domiciled in North Central and Benue in particular. Now, for this conversation, we are now joined by former Benue State Governor Senator Gabriel Suswam on his plans for overhauling the PDP as he guns for the party's national chairmanship, the state party reconciliation, and exactly how effectively has the PDP played its own role as the opposition party within Nigeria. Very good to have you join us here on Newsday. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Well, you're seeking to complete the tenure of Iochia Ayu. Uh, what in particular do you bring to the table in order to help uh, bolster PDP and address some of the issues that your party seems to be uh, embroiled in? Well, let me thank you very much for the opportunity to talk to not just the PDP family, but to other Nigerians who have been very concerned about the direction that the country is drifting to and the fact that um, they seem not to be a very strong uh, alternative for Nigerians to, uh, to look at. Uh, PDP as a party, as we all know, was a party that came into power in 1999 and uh, stayed in power for about 16 years. Uh, it was a party that was built and anchored on the principle of uh, welfare of Nigerians. Um, we had President Obasanjo, uh, who did very well, uh, did his eight years, handed over to President Umaru uh, Musa Yaradua, uh, who unfortunately died, and his tenure was completed by his deputy or his vice president, uh, Goodluck Jonathan. Uh, unfortunately, Goodluck Jonathan uh, lost the election to the APC. I lost the election to President Muhammadu Buhari uh, of the APC. Uh, we lost the election because uh, of what is happening today, because of uh, the seemingly lack of discipline uh, in our party at that time, uh, coupled with the massive propaganda and lies uh, of, the, um, uh, of the current uh, party in power now in the APC. Uh, we couldn't uh, make any headway, and so good luck lost that election. And Buhari came in making promises of change uh, in the body politic of this country. Uh, Buhari's eight years have come and gone. It is left for Nigerians uh, to, frankly, um, determine whether the change that we promise actually change, whether we change for the better or we change for the worse. I believe that this country knows dived will change uh, for the worst. Uh, because if we look at uh, economic parameters that were left by Jonathan and what happened during Buhari's time, um, most Nigerians uh, say that they actually would have preferred for Jonathan to stay back. But John, in spite of that, Buhari did his eight years. And then the current president took over. PDP. We thought to win the election, uh, nomination was done, and then crisis started um, after the nomination when uh, the former Vice President Elijah Bwaka Atiku was nominated uh, to carry the flag of PDP. Uh, some governors uh, felt that they were shortchanged and they didn't feel right. So there was this, the G5 governors who uh, say that uh, they, they expected better, but that, uh, you know, they were not going to accept uh, some of the things that happened. It started like a joke. Uh, it wasn't well handled, and um, we found ourselves where we are today. Uh, we lost the election, 
And uh, we told that after losing that election, we could sit down as a party and um, re-engineer ourselves. Unfortunately, uh, that recalcitrant uh, behavior among party members continued. And um, our party seems to be in comatose uh, as I speak now. And so I felt that uh, there was the need uh, for someone who has been the party since 1999, I've not left PDP. I'm a big beneficiary of the party. I won House of Reps twice. I spent eight years in the House of Reps. I spent eight years as governor and four years as a senator. And uh, I will say that to some large extent, I understand the workings of PDP. I know the history of PDP. And I will be able to bring a lot of value to the table in terms of refocusing the party and uh, creating a viable alternative for Nigerians. It is obvious that the APC government, under the current uh, leadership, um, don't have a direction. All the policies, whether they're economic, whether they're social, uh, falling flat on their faces. And, and so Nigerians need a viable alternative, not just an alternative. That viable alternative can only be possible uh, if they have a very serious and focused leadership. And I think I can provide that leadership. Well, very well said, you know, and I wish you all the best in your bid, you know, to becoming the national chairman of your party. But you talked about some recalcitrant members within your party. I'm wondering how you plan to deal with them. You know, these recalcitrant members, some people have labeled them the strong men within the PDP. You know, they are either holding your party to ransom or they are sabotaging it due to their personal ambition. How do you plan to deal with the obstacle that they represent if indeed the PDP wants to be on the path to greatness? You know, under Section uh, 57 of the PDP Constitution, there's a copious provision for a disciplinary committee. That is provided at all levels. It just needs uh, a focused leadership to activate that committee. Uh, Section 58 of the same Constitution provide uh, offenses that constitute breaches against the party. And if you activate Section 57 and form a very strong disciplinary committee, that committee will follow the procedure provided under Section 58 and be able to discipline recalcitrant members. In any society or any organization where breaches are not followed by sanction, it then means that you don't have a society or an organization. There must be regulations that guide and, and regulate the conduct of activities within any society and organization. And once that, that is jettisoned, then you can have members behave the way they want. That is exactly what is happening in PDP. People have breached uh, uh, the provisions of Section 58 of the PDP. The, 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 that provision copiously provides for offenses that constitute breaches against the party. And no dismay measure has been taken on any one of them. And so those people are emboldened there are other people who say, well, if this person can do this and nothing can happen to him, why not me? And so PDP is uh, looking like a party that has no serious leadership. No person can be disciplined. Every person is a leader in PDP. There's no structure. There has to be a structure. PDP is a well-structured party. It is just that we need a leadership to take actions that are supposed to take. There's a constitution that regulates the activities of PDP, like I said. Section 57 provides, under Chapter 10 of that constitution, provide uh, for uh, disciplinary committees to be set up across the length and breadth of the party. Section 58 provides copiously uh, offenses. And none of this is being done. Since we lost election, which is uh, almost a year, we've not had neck meeting, and the, con the, 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 the constitution of the party provides for periodic uh, neck meeting. That has not been heard. Nobody seems to be talking about it. Uh, now, the issue of the national chairman. The party under Section 45 provides that if the national chairman, by whatever circumstance, 
is no longer capable to act or resigns. That party provides, the section provides that the deputy national chairman from that zone where the chairman comes from, we act in that capacity pending the replacement of somebody from the zone that the chairman comes from. And that is provided in section 47 sub 6 of the constitution of the party, where it says that where a vacancy exists, that the appropriate committee of the party, in this case, the North Central Zone, we meet and select a replacement uh, because Senator Yochayu came from the North Central and the party had zoned the chairmanship of the, North, of, of, of the party uh, to the North Central. In his absence, under section 46 sub 6, 47 sub 6 of, of PDP, the North Central is empowered uh, to provide a replacement. That provision says SHA. SHA in law is mandatory. And so the current acting national chairman who came into that acting capacity by circumstance and providence has been there for almost a year. And nobody seems to be saying anything. That wouldn't have been the problem. But the problem is that the party is not going anywhere. People have committed uh, offenses against the party that should be disciplined. There is no discipline. The party is not meeting to make assessment of where we are. The party is not providing that viable opposition. Even if it is, I believe in constructive uh, criticism. This government, this current government, has taken steps or turn up policies that the party PDP should be able to comment on them. For instance, the president removed uh, subsidy. In the same vein, floated the Naira. In the same vein, the interest rate of banks have been increased. And so how do you take measures that are supposedly anti-people? And then the PDP seems not to have an answer to that. So how can Nigerians take PDP as a viable opposition party that they will vote for and vote this government that has no direction out? So we need somebody with that understanding. You need somebody who can give PDP a leadership that can constructively criticize this government. I don't believe in destructive criticism. But on these issues, how can you remove subsidy with no plan and then in the same vein, flood the Naira and in the same vein, go ahead and increase the uh, interest rate in bank? It means that nobody can do any business. You go to bank now, interest rate is about 31%. What business are you doing if it is not uh, these uh, Yahoo boys that will give you enough money to pay back a loan that you take at 31% inter interest rate. Look at the inflation trend. PDP is not talking about it. Now I've heard uh, like a rumor that they are going to increase VAT to 15%. It means that there will be no average person in this country, no average business. Nobody can do business under such circumstances. These are bad policies of this government that should be uh, criticized and alternative provided so that Nigerians would know that we have a party here who, a party that can provide answers to our problems. We are not doing that. And so I thought and believe that uh, we should have a focused leadership um, um, at the PDP headquarters. And I think I can provide that. And you, you said it quite well. Uh with the situation in the country, Nigerians are groaning, they are grumbling, their stomachs are hungry, their pockets are emptying, and they are looking for a political body or politicians to be their mouthpieces or to advocate for them. The PDP used to be that. Um, and speaking of opposition parties, what will it take to restore the PDP to its uh, glor former glory of being the main opposition of the country, as we know that even Peter Obi of the Labour Party just um, a few months back was touting the Labour Party as the main opposition. And he has been saying quite a few things um, in order to advocate on the plight of Nigerians. It's a heavy crown that you're, you're vying for. Uh, what will it take to restore the PDP? Well, uh, PDP, uh, was a party that was built on the principle of inclusiveness. Uh, it wasn't a party for um, one man or a group of people. 
And that was why it was possible for PDP to win the election in 1999. Uh, prominent Nigerians stemmed together and built PDP. And it was very consultative in nature. And to that extent, every person had a sense of inclusiveness. Every person had a sense of belonging in PDP. And PDP won election, provided leadership, leadership that was purposeful, leadership that was focused. Now, that gradually began to erode in subsequent leadership, uh, especially when Good Luck became president. And um, a whole lot of people uh, begin to uh, destructively criticize him. And then the issues of the insecurity uh, setting in, uh, in the, in the uh, northeast part of the country. And at that time, they seemed not to be an answer to it. People took advantage of that and voted PDP out. But then we needed to have come back as a people. So what I would do as chairman of this party is to engage stakeholders. There are a lot of stakeholders who, because of what has happened, have just decided to take a sit-down look attitude. And uh, nobody is there to engage them. There is no leadership to engage such people who can come back to the table with a weight of experience and say, look, this is the direction that we need to go. Now, I don't want to talk about Labour Party and uh, my friend, uh, the presidential candidate, uh, because you can't win election operating as a one-man show. He's operating a one-man show, uh, making appearance here and there. That does not give you election. You need to get people together, people with understanding, people who can help build a country uh, together. You can move forward. So PDP has that capacity. We have the resource, human resources. There are a lot of, of, of people, for instance, uh, the former president hardly appear in anything PDP, Jonathan, uh, the vice president, uh, comes sometimes and all. All of these people need proper engagement. These are people who have led this country. You cannot just make an announcement that you are holding neck of PDP and expect that the former vice president or former president should come. You engage them, let them know why they need to be there and their own contribution. I would do all of that because I have been in, in, in the system since 1999. I, I'm more of an establishment person within the PDP. I know who can do what and who can contribute what. I will engage all of these stakeholders, bring them all, all together, and we'll be having regular meetings uh, to assess the situation in the country, both within the PDP and the country at large. And once we give people a sense of belonging in any society or any organization, you will have the best. And uh, it's something that I know how to do as governor. I was able to... Um, performed very well because every person was engaged in Benue. All the stakeholders were engaged. I will bring that to bear uh, at the national level, at the national headquarters of PDP, where those who uh, are even left the party will be able to bring them back because the APC government now is not providing any, any alternative. Uh, people are very disgruntled and disenchanted with the government because, you know, you can't do business. The environment is so toxic now, you can't do anything. You can't borrow money from the bank as an average person. How can you borrow money at 31%, like I've said? Uh, the exchange rate, if you want to import anything, you need volumes of Naira uh, for you to be able to get the dollars enough for you to import anything. So that also is dying. Now, both the physical and monetary policy of this government are, are in shambles. I don't think they know what they're doing. It's just, Gabo in uh, and, 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 and Gabo out. It's, it's not anything that any person can place his or her hands on. I will provide leadership for PDP to recapture back power and will provide, will let Nigeria know that this government has no capacity to take Nigeria anywhere. We we'll look at the issue of, uh, look at the power sector. You know, there's nothing that is going on. Nothing. It's all complaint. Even the telecommunication. I believe that every person knows in the last one or two weeks, you can hardly talk to any person conveniently. This is a government that has no direction. So PDP needs to point out those pitfalls for Nigerians to believe that PDP can provide a viable alternative. That I'm ready to give that leadership at the headquarters of PDP for us to be able to capture back power as a party 
uh, that knows how to run government. Well, thank you very much for that very detailed explanation. But it could be argued, you know, that Nigeria was not exactly flowing with milk and honey, you know, when the PDP was in power. And also a large majority of our ruling class, they are from the PDP, even though they later cross capited So I'm wondering, really, how different is the PDP from the APC? You'd remember when the PDP, PDP was in power, we had cases of insecurity. Chibok girls were kidnapped. Churches were bombed. Car parks, you know, were attacked. The UN building was also... You know, it, it, it was, uh, there was a bomb attack at the UN building. Corruption was rife. The cabal that were benefiting from all subsidy, they were never named and shamed. We didn't have stable I, electricity. We had I billions think, of naira, you know, where I don't, the, the I way don't think, invested in the power project. But we still didn't have stable electricity. So I'm wondering, really, you know, how you think you're going to recapture the trust of Nigerians. I don't think you want to compare what... Well, we might not be able to compare, yeah, I don't think but you want to compare. don't you think the PDP should also share the blame for where we are at the moment? See, um, PDP um, as a party when in power. Uh, I'm surprised that you are trying to compare uh, PDP in power with uh, what is happening now. What is happening now is not government. People are simply looting the treasury of this country. They're not running government. Uh, look at the parameters. When PDP left government, how much was the exchange rate of dollar to or pounds to the Naira? And what is now? How much was a liter of fuel? And what is now? What was the interest rate in the banks with what is now? There's no basis for comparison. There's no basis at all. What is the foreign policy of this government? Nobody knows. Look at, what, look at the mess that happened between us and a uh, Nigeria Republic. A government that is focused would um, be more careful in approaching what happened in Niger. Look at what happened. Now, for those who travel, uh, on, up to now, uh, you know, when you leave here, you spend like an hour extra or two hours while going to Europe because you need to detour because we couldn't fly over Niger. Nigeria was the one supplying power, or has been the one supplying power to Niger. Now, the arrangement was in such a manner that Niger shouldn't dam River Niger upwards. It would provide them with power at subsidized rate. Now, we stop supplying them with uh, the necessary electricity. These people have started building and damming the, the Niger. What that means to us is that once that is dam, our Shiroro dam, and the dams that we have here that provide electricity for us, we not have enough water to generate enough electricity. What is the implication of that, our economy? And so when a country that has no uh, focused foreign policy take uh, decisions, uh, by, uh, decisions you know, that uh, will have negative impact on the country, and nobody seems to understand that these decisions will have negative impact on the country. That is not a government that you can compare with what happened in PDP. At least President Obasanjo had set the, the, the trend, even if we say that he was traveling. There were meaningful uh, uh, impacts uh, to the country. When Yaradua took over, he had a short stay. But I, I had had opportunity of traveling with him to Brazil to meet with the president there. Uh, to engage in some bilateral agreement. Now, what we are now doing is to carry a very large uh, uh, group of persons, uh, travel with them, and uh, when we come back, that is the end of the story. You won't hear anything. They say bilaterals and multilaterals have been signed. Nothing. I don't think that that is a government that is showing direction. So there is no foreign policy that is clearly cut out that you can see. My friend is a foreign minister. He's somebody who's a very high-sounding uh, person. But I don't think him alone will be able to uh, uh, do anything. It has to be a policy, a well-draft, well-thought-out foreign policy under the present uh, global circumstance situation that we find ourselves in. That is, that is lacking. So PDP is a party that will sit down and put policies together that will impact positively on the generator of Nigerians 
and make sure that we we'll go back to those old good days where an, an average person could go and buy bread and feed his family. A bag of rice when PDP left, a bag of rice was in the range of 12,000, they said. It's 75,000 now. So how can you compare that? Well, just for the sake of you time, allow, allow me to interject. You both, you, Sir, allow me to interject for the sake of time, just to put yeah. things in perspective. You know that saying that says the road to, uh, uh, that Rome was not built in a day. Well, the uh, metaphoric Rome or suffering yeah. that we are in right now was not built in one presidential term or two or, you know, it, it goes back quite a while. Things have <sighs> been stacking up and I'm sure that you can agree with that even though you can't do so on television. But I want to jump to the comments you made about um, governors, um, lawmakers stacking their pockets in this uh, particular uh, administration. In January of this year, uh, your party came out quite boldly to uh, criticize the 2024 budget, and it said it was a harvest of deceit, false claims, and empty promises, and said that the president's uh, New Year address didn't touch on any critical issues plaguing the country. We also know the drama that uh, went down with the Senator Ningi, uh, who alleged the budget was padded uh, by the Senate to the tune of about three trillion naira and his suspension thereafter. Uh, can you give us your opinion on what exactly, uh, on his suspension, how the PDP plans to defend him? Because it seems as though you have similar things to say, even though it's not the same thing, but. Uh, how will he be defended? How will this be counteracted? And what is your take on uh, this budget issue as uh, we Nigerians are watching in horror as the well, money is being frittered away? Let, let, me, let, me, let me say that as a budget person, I want to say that 2024 budget, budget is not a budget. Uh, I've looked at it first. You look at the deficit, the high deficit in the budget, deficit of about close to nine trillion. Then you look at the financing item of those deficits, which in themselves don't exist. It's about eight point something. You take uh, the financing items uh, for the deficit, uh, sale of government assets. That has been reoccurring the decimal in all the budget throughout the period I was in the National Assembly from 1999. Every year, they say that they will finance deficit from sale of government asset. That has never happened. And it's not going to happen uh, in this company. But even if we sell those assets, which are the assets? These are power assets. If we put the entire value of those power assets together, they will not be half of the, the deficit. So in essence, what that means is that if we take the deficit itself, which is about $9 trillion, plus the financing items, which have been provided at eight point something trillion and put that together. Then you go to the tax expenditure. Tax expenditure are waivers of almost about three point something trillion. It means that the deficit level of this government is over 20 something trillion itself. So how much do you have in the budget? Maybe about three trillion. So this budget, as far as I'm concerned, does not exist. So what has happened is that the people who put the budget together, it was just copy and paste, and for, for them to be able to say that they provide a budget. But a critical analysis of the budget show that this budget is not implementable. They can't implement it. The deficit level will not allow it to be implemented. What do you mean by deficit? That money is not there. When you say financing item of the deficit, you are now going to print money because they say that there will be both uh, international and uh, internal borrowing. Those internal borrowing is simply printing money. There has been complained that about 30 trillion was printed under uh, President Buhari. I had raised that while I was in the, in the Senate. The APC legislators, my colleague, they agree with me. They, they, they will use technical terms, what they call quantitative easing. That is printing of money to finance deficit. What would that impact? What would that impact on the Naira and the inflation? You're going to have higher inflation. The Naira is going to further depreciate. So those, that budget cannot be implemented. So when uh, Senator Ningi said that the budget was padded, I think he used the wrong term. I say that before. The budget was not padded. What is budget padded, padding? 
when the estimate that provided that were provided by the president, uh, when the budget that the president signed is higher than the budget that is submitted to the National Assembly, or when new items are introduced by the National Assembly, I don't think that is what happened. What has always happened is that some powerful senators, and most times the leadership, will take much, much higher in terms of what you call cons uh, constituency projects than the ordinary senators. And that has always been something that has, has always agitated the minds of the floor senators. In this case, from what I understand Nige was saying, is that you have some senators who have project worth 100 billion, and why some other senators have less than 200 million? That is criminal as far as I'm concerned. And so it wouldn't have been budget padding. He would have said that there's fraud in the budget. Uh, that's, that would have been the right term for him to say if what he said was true, that some senators have 120 billion, why some have less than 200 million. I have not looked at the details of the budget to know whether that assertion was true. But if that is true, that is fraud and that is criminality. And so he shouldn't have used budget padding because the president didn't complain that the budget that came back to him was more than what he submitted. Budget padding is only when the budget that is sent back to the president for assent is more, more than what he submitted. That is budget padding. So I don't think it was so much of budget padding. But the agitation of senators like Ningi was that how can I be a senator with you? You have project in your constituency worth 120 billion, and I have less than 200 million. Uh, that was his complaint. And, uh, and so for, uh, for the budget padding thing, I think Ningi didn't quite use the right term, and that is why um, he was suspended. The suspension itself, um, I think, was out of malice, uh, because uh, I don't think the rules of the Senate provide that the senator can be suspended for three months. I think the highest should be 14 days. Uh, but that is for him uh, to take the necessary legal action to correct that. But like I said, 2024 budget does not exist. It is not implementable because of the things I've mentioned here. The uh, tax expenditure is too high. Those waivers, why will you provide such high waivers? And to which people and to which company? Who are the beneficiaries of these tax waivers? Monies that you would have served to implement or engage in social project. You are giving to individuals about three point something trillion, I think 3.6 or so. So those are some of the things that I've seen in the budget Senator Gabriel that makes Suswam. me feel that to implement this budget. Senator Gabriel yeah. Suswam, I'm so sorry to interrupt you. We're having a very delightful discussion, but we are completely out of time. Former Banu State Governor, Senator Gabriel Suswam, thank you so much for joining us on Newsday. <laughs>